What's going on guys, it's Dean from Walkify and we're back for more Kerbal Space Program. In the last episode we launched a polar mission and we sent the crew up to the North Pole to plant a flag to commemorate uh, the holiday season. And today we are launching the synchronous satellite to assist in pinpointing the location of the polar crew uh, just to give the rescue crew a little more accuracy. So, uh, this is a special type of satellite because, uh, well, it's not geosynchronous, it is kerbosynchronous, I suppose. Um, but synchronous satellites are very important because their period of, of orbit is the exact same as the period of axial rotation of a planet or a satellite if you uh, choose to do that. But what that means is that it takes the exact same amount of time for a satellite to complete one full orbit as it does for the planet or satellite, artificial or um, natural satellite to complete one full day. And so on Earth it's a period of 24 hours and in Kerbal Space Program, it's a period of six hours because Kerbin's day is six hours long. And so uh, we can actually do a little bit of math and physics to calculate it exactly. And to, uh, so to get the information we need for that, we can go on to the Kerbal Space Program wiki and to the Kerbin page. And then we can just cheat and you know, look at that synchronous orbit. 2,863.33 kilometers. They've done it for us already because there are people who are very interested in this game who um, frankly take a lot more interest in it than I do, although I do very much like this game. But we will not be cheating and we're going to sort of uh, solve it ourselves. And so we can take a look. Oh, also, this this value is based off of the Kerbal Space Program way of calculating altitude, which is based off of sea level or distance above. Whereas uh, the math takes into account the center of the mass producing object or gravitationally producing object, which is Kerbin. And so we need to go all the way to the core of that, which is 600 kilometers extra onto that distance there. And so the first step is we're going to equate the centripetal force of the satellite's orbit to the gravitational force that Kerbin exudes. And so we can take a look at the formula for centripetal force. This is on Wikipedia for the centripetal force. And it gives you, it, it deals with omega. I'm not sure exactly why, but uh, it's two pi over period is what, uh, what we're interested in. And that's what they list as omega. And so F equals MA, that's Newton's second uh, law of motion. And then you have ma is equal to mv squared over r, where m is the mass of the satellite, v is the tangential speed, because there's no vector arrow over it, and then r is the radius of the circle that it creates. That's why it goes to the core of Kerbin instead of to the surface. And then, Um, it uses uh, the omega here to use mr omega squared and then fills in omega with that. But if you want to simplify this, it becomes m times two pi, or 4 pi squared r over t squared. And that's the formula that's uh, usually taught in the physics course at least where I come from. And so 
that is what I will use. And then we are going to equate that to gravity, the force of gravity here, which is Newton's gravitational constant, which is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 Newton meters squared per kilogram squared, times the mass of the gravity producing object, times the mass of the orbiting object, divided by their distance squared from center to center. And so we are going to need to rearrange these formulas. And real quick, m2 m here and m here can cancel because they're both in the numerator. And since we're equating them, it would divide off of both sides and we'd get 1. So we're left with 4 pi squared r over t squared is equal to gm1 over r squared. And we're solving for r right now. And so you would take the r squared off of this side and put it in here. And then, um, and then we want to isolate it over here. And so to do that, you would multiply t over, period, and divide 4 pi squared. And you'd be left with r cubed is equal to gm1 times period squared all over 4 pi squared. And then you take the cube root of that and you have your distance. So we are going to need to take, um, period is the only thing that we're looking for in this one, so that's not much to do. And then so we pull up the calculator and you take, I, I like to use brackets. Negative 11. times mass of Kerbin. Mass is why we have the uh, this up pulled up because you can find this in game, but I'd have to exit out of this light. Mass is 5.29 times 10 to the 22nd. Happened there. Something's going on with the numbers. Ooh, okay. Eleven. Nice. Good. Times the mass of Kerbin, which is five. I forgot it already. Oh, it's right there. Five point two nine times ten to the twenty second. Hmm. I forgot the number. Oh, I have to calculate this all in one step. That's going to be tough. Okay. 6.67 times 10 to the out. Negative 11. Close bracket. Times. 5.29 times 10. Second, close bracket, times period squared. So we take 6 hours times 60 minutes times 60 seconds, because period is measured in seconds. And then we divide all that by 4 pi squared, and that's just a number. 4 pi Oh, this is a uh, good, good thing that I missed this because you should square the period, which I forgot to do. 
And so this is the numerator for this equation. Unfortunately, we don't need to remember that because it's just uh, put in there as the answer. And then divide that by 4 times pi squared. It equals, and we get this monstrosity of a number. So then we put this to the cubed root, which is the same as putting it to the one third. That's a much more reasonable number. So we take this. Multiply by the, or subtract it by Kerbin's equatorial radius. And what do you know? Oh, it's almost the exact same number. Now, uh, theirs is probably a little more accurate than mine because I've left out digits, but that's all right. So, uh, this. This is the height that we're going to get to with this flight. And then we also need the speed at that point. So we can put it um, back into here. So we would, we're going to need centripetal velocity spelled incorrectly so down here Yeah, two, 2 pi r over p. That will give us the tangential velocity at that point. So, back to the calculator. We will take 2 times pi times that radius that we just solved for, which I got rid of, so we'll just put this in. 2863.33. Actually, I need to put this again in brackets. And again, actually, 2863.33 plus 600, close that bracket, times 1,000 to get it in meters, close that bracket, and we open it at the beginning. Uh, so close that bracket. And now, divide it by the period. Which is, again, 6 times 60 times... All that is equal to 1,007. So, with that information, 2863 and 1007, we can launch it, and whereabouts would that put us? So this here is at 800 kilometers, almost 900, so we're looking at about twice as distant as that. Not quite the moon, about here, 
or where this is. So it's going to be quite the trip. Um, so we better get it started. Oh, that's pretty loud. Nice to see that my computer... Oh, never mind. Just as I say it. So I've, uh... I've equipped this... This little, uh... Mission here. I've been hitting 2 instead of W. I've equipped this with a pair of jet engines. Which are air-deprived. Oh, I forgot the most important part. Need air intake for that to work. No wonder it was going so slowly. Oh. Why is this so loud? Please, please no. I do not want it. Yes, no, I'm going to go inside. Okay. Uh, okay, well. I probably forgot those because I just added those about 10 minutes before making the video, or starting the video. But uh, I did include these jet engines, so hopefully this time that will work. And brace your ears. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, and so I put these on the lower stage because they will work while we're in the atmosphere. And then by, hopefully by the time that we're out of the atmosphere, I can ditch them. Turn this around real quick here. Pretty nice. Okay, get this orbit back on track. Oh, we're falling! These engines are not powerful enough. We're also not on full thrust. Oh, my poor ears. Screaming jets definitely do not help. Okay, jet engines are a wash. Let's just drop, drop those. As they, uh, they might as well be faulty. This stage can take off, but we're getting nowhere near orbit with just this little bit. So anyway, here's what here's what the uh, the rest of it looks like. Now this thing has uh, some serious delta V because of its minuscule mass. You can actually see the camera kind of... I'm not liking those explosion noises right in my ear. We're three kilometers away, I don't need to hear that. You can see the camera waving around just because of the fuel flow. Also might be the wind resistance on this. Um, Tiny thing. Anyway, let us revert to vehicle assembly and I will fix this real quick. They should call me Quick Fix Man because that took all of two seconds. And hopefully, this time it doesn't break my ears so much. Uh, I revoke my title.
Okay, we're finally in working condition. Oh boy, does this thing like to drift, and we're already approaching 200 meters per second, so we can drop that. We can really drop that. Okay. Now that that is over, I can finally hear again. And uh, it looks like it's going to be smooth sailing up until uh, we get into an orbit. Now, I'm not going to put this up to an 8 kilometer orbit or 80 kilometer orbit like I normally do. I'm going to put all the way up and then start to even it out. So it might take a little while longer. I'll see you guys uh, when something interesting happens. Jeez, it would have been nice to have launched this during the day. I could have actually seen something. One of the more basic rockets I've ever launched. There we go. A little over, but that's uh, more or less okay. And we're still relatively on plane. That's, that looks pretty good. And so now we have the long wait. Would you, <laughs> would you look at that? We're going to come pretty close to one of the... Uh, actually, the first thing to ever come in orbit. I'll set that as the target. See where it's coming from. Where is it? There it is. You're passing over it. There it is, walk the way over to Mark 2. Bye. It's nice seeing you again, I guess. Let's unmark that. And let's see what kind of delta V it's going to take to uh, to get this all the way up there. Get this on Apple Apps, please. Thank you. Oh, 955, that's not too bad. This thing doesn't have reaction wheels. Okay. I warp ahead. Have flaps in forty seconds. Oh no, the ship went dead. Oh, oh no. Oh, that's a shame. And it just went through the planet. Um. Yeah, let's uh, let's <laughs> let's try that again. <laughs> well, the prospect of getting a new mic doesn't uh, doesn't seem seem too far off for me, because when you lose half of your recording it really starts to 
you know, make you a little angry. But that's okay. Two satellites isn't going to hurt anybody. It's just a shame that you're not going to see me able to go right straight up all the way there and then circularize it, but that's okay. Now this, uh, I still have to correct a little bit, but uh, just before, just like five minutes ago, I started uh, running the game at full time warp, and this, this uh, altitude actually does a pretty decent job. I ran it for about a half of a Kerbin year, maybe a little more, and it pretty much didn't move. So I don't think that I even really do need to adjust it all that much because it works. It works just fine. And it's except it's always over this little thing here, this little peninsula. And it's not over the KSC, which kind of sucks. But this one I'll try to get. Um, I'm thinking either on the other side or above the KSC. Hmm. I'll just do the other side because I'm. I mean, you know, we don't. <laughs> these aren't doing anything. They're just there to, to show that you can do it. So, I might as well make it symmetrical. But anyway, it's pretty much just a straight launch up. Uh, all the way up. It's no different than a regular mission to the moon or to Minmus or even into a regular orbit because that's all it is. It's just uh, quite a bit higher than what we've been dealing with. So if I want it on the other side I'm gonna have to start my gravity turn a little early. No. But what's really nice is <laughs> coming back from vacation just to see, oh, you know, 40 minutes off of uh, the files missing for no reason. But, you know, stuff like that's just going to happen when you're making videos. And you got to deal with it, I guess. Okay, so that's uh, that's the orbit. Let's extend this. Now, unfortunately, what's that down there? Space room. Now, unfortunately, I've accidentally outfitted this with the as the version without solar panels attached to the uh, transfer stage, but uh, since I deployed the fairing, I can. Uh, I can activate this solar panel that I have on the side here. And that should stop it from going dead. Okay, so now I just have to wait until... Hmm. Until it's on the other side of Kerbin from this. So I'll see you then. Now when I said the uh, the other side of the planet, I meant the same side. <laughs> because if I burned over there, then I'd get it right up there. That's not where I want it. Want it to be on the opposite here. And oh, overshot it. <laughs> now I'm not sure. I have to be kind of conservative with my uh, with my electricity because I am in the dark side here. Okay. 
Now I'm not too sure how this is going to work here because this is in one hour and this will have made a sixth of a rotation. So if this is a half, then this will be a third. So it'll be two thirds off instead of three sixths. There's the station. We could dock with that if it weren't dead right now. No, actually we couldn't. There's no docking for it. But Maybe. Oh, there's a whole plane correction I need to do. Now see, that's the thing about uh, geosynchronous satellites, is that they need to be planar to the equator for them to work, because even if you have a geosynchronous orbit height, but it's at an angle, then what you're going to have is the satellite comes up and it crosses like this. And as the planet rotates, it's going to maybe be over it at one point, but then immediately go away. So that's not exactly what you want. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to mess around with this one. Seven. Not 62. I'll probably not quite get it perfect. Which is okay. Actually, let's save the plane change for later because then it'll actually. Oh, I can do it on the on the ascending node. Oh, in uh, two seconds. Fortunately, it doesn't take much to circularize this. This up. Oh. Now, if you're trying to get a circular orbit, then what you need to do is wait till these things are flip like that and try to catch them right in the halfway point. Now, that's not going to give you a perfect circle, but it's going to make it better than if your burn is at the periapse. overshot a little bit, but that's perfectly okay, <laughs> especially when that happens. I should really look at, uh, at these burn timers, especially considering at such a high altitude, this rocket is very powerful. Such a light craft, especially. Okay. So now I can burn a little bit to get this up to 60, a little bit above 62, and then play with the radial, not that way, that way either. Twenty-eight sixty-three. I want on both of them. with a half meter per second in delta V.
Just shaking the craft around makes it flutter around. Whoop. Now this is where RCS would come in handy, but I don't have any of that. Just so I can't overshoot it, let's set the thrust loader to 1 or 5.5. Close enough. Now, if we set this as a target, we can get the descending mode. Correct this plane. In another 30 minutes. Which I overshot again. Oh, but it doesn't matter because the ascending node has changed. Or not. Oh, that's close enough, isn't it? Actually, I should probably wait for this burn timer. There, no one will ever notice the difference. Okay, well, these two aren't exactly across from each other. Not by a long shot, I would say, but they're both about the same distance from the KSC. Uh, give or take 20 degrees. But anyway guys, now that we've got our satellites up in orbit, uh, it looks like we're about done for today, so I'll go ahead and uh, detach this and make some adjustments myself, but uh, until then, uh, I'll see you guys next time.